That's some good singing, amen? Amen. 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 First time to work with the Carries. And uh, I, I just met them. I think I said it right. Carries, is that right? And uh, what a great couple. And uh, looking forward to getting acquainted with them uh, this week. And I'm already, I already like them. I like them. I like them a lot. Uh, praise the Lord. If you're a Christian, you can like people really fast. It don't take much. Amen? Amen. You liking me out there okay? How we doing? Amen. Fast. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pastor Plank, for this incredible trust and invitation to be able to come and uh, preach this Easter revival. I mean, I can't imagine that you would be contented with anyone else preaching over Holy Week other than your own famous, incredibly gifted pastor. But uh, if I have any health issues, I'm sure he'll kick in. Uh, and uh, Jim Plank's one of my favorites. And he's your fa one of your favorites too, right? Amen. Amen. Don't you love the pastor? Amen. Come on now. I'm going to start meddling, and I haven't been up here five minutes. <laughs> Love the planks and uh, all the other team, the team that, that, that uh, supports them. It's great, uh, Schaefer and Malloyd and all, all of you that thank you for the invitation and the wonderful hospitality and uh, just looking forward to so much. You can tell that Jim Plank's your pastor, though, because you start at 730 That, if, if, <clears throat> so I'm already looking at that clock thinking, okay, uh, I better get done in 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, help him, Lord, I heard that. I heard that. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm telling you what. Uh, some of us just can't think that fast. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, no, it's just great crowd, great crowd here tonight. Greetings from all the people in my world to all of you in this world, and and God bless you on behalf of my family. Hello to all of you, my wife and kids. I wish so much they could be with me, but they're not and not able. And and I know typically you would have started last night, and it's my fault, complete, totally my fault. I had a conflict in schedule, and they were able to give a night because that was supposed to go through tonight, and so they gave up a night and. You were gracious enough to give a night and was able to, to be here. And so uh, thank you for that, for that graciousness. I'm so grateful for that. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, tonight to Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. Now, <clears throat> I have water with me because I'm just recovering from uh, his sinus drainage. And uh, I have... Um, lost my throat in the process, my voice, but it, has, it is coming back, and so I'm thankful uh, for that, but uh, a little worried about that. Uh, thank you for the wonderful hospitality, uh, whoever got my room ready, I love it, uh, over there at the Wesley Center, that's wonderful, and uh, the, just the, the IHC place over there, that's so, so wonderful, except there needs to be a correction. I want to make sure I have the attention of the IHC General Secretary. There needs to be a correction. Instead of the stairs, there needs to be escalators. Is there an amen anywhere? Is there another fat guy in the room that'll say amen? The IHC and the escalators. We got to have those escalators. I did stop at the top, though, for the plank, and I dropped a piece of gum down over the banister just for old time's sake. I didn't. I didn't. I promise. You'd have to be a kid growing up attending IHC to appreciate the old escalators and all. Anyway, the fun on the escalators. Right, guys? You know what I'm talking about. This is Holy Week, and I know that uh, we're having revival and have been given full liberty to just mind the Lord, courage to do so. And uh, we'll do so with the help uh, of the Lord. On my way here, uh, my mind continued to come back to this very familiar story. One of the things that we preachers these days are having to die out to is the fact that we so, we're so grateful for the internet 
and the live streaming, but the thing that we have to die out to is your sermons are now broadcast everywhere, and um, that's a wonderful thing, but uh, those listening, sometimes you, uh, you're going to hear it more than once, and maybe they say repetition is the best teacher, so maybe that's still a good thing, I don't know. But this is indeed, this is indeed a story that leads us right into Passover. It's an important story, made its way into Holy Scripture. It's a simple story, but it moves me, speaks to me tonight. And I pray with the help of the Holy Spirit that it will speak to all of us. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning with verse 46, if you would stand with me, please. I really do want to get to know as many of you as I can, so don't hesitate to come up, talk to me. I I just would love to bump elbows or fist or handshake or I do it all. So if you're afraid of COVID, uh, I might be highly toxic, but I am one happy toxic dude. (laughs) No, I, I don't think I'm toxic at all, but anyway, I'd love to speak and share with you this week. Verse 46 And they came to Jericho, and as he, this being Jesus, went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, He began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Our Father and our God. We almost wonder if we need to say anything else. Have mercy on us tonight. You're the God of mercy and grace. You're slow to anger. And you're overflowing. You're plenteous in loving kindness. So tonight, visit this congregation and somehow visit this whole community. You've done it before. Would you do it again? Do not, Lord Jesus, do not, please do not let Sunday night come and any one of us the same. In Jesus' name I pray. God's people said. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I want you to come and walk with me. It's right before our Lord's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. He's walking through Jericho. He's making his way to the northern gates of Jericho, beyond which our Lord will make about a 15-mile trek walk to Jerusalem. It's customary of that time The scholars, the learned, 
the advantaged would cluster around a great teacher and they would listen and they would hear the teaching. Much learning was done through oratory transmission and so there's the oratory, there's the discussion that was so important and vital. The telling of those legendary historic accounts and stories long before there were there was ever the ability to write them down, there was the oratory, the passing it along verbally, the telling. These were important, valuable moments. The, 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 uh, the, this cluster around our Lord, this, this group that was the privileged are gathering around our Lord, they're traveling with him out to that northern gate along the way, the families and the neighbors and the community have formed their lines. I see it in my mind's eye and they're watching this fortunate, privileged group of men with this teacher pass by. Out the northern gate they will go they will make their 15 day 15 mile excuse me journey to Jerusalem Passover week will begin and we will know that incredible moment will go down in history as the great triumphant entry of our Lord into Jerusalem and he would begin his final week leading him to the cross to his death, his burial, and of course, resurrection and then ascension. This incredible Holy Week is about to take place. Our Lord is well aware of the journey that he's on. Those around him, not so much. There's all kinds of things that are happening. The atmosphere, the environment is Tense with all kinds of conflict and strife. And, and here our Lord is passing. There are the group of the privileged around him. He's teaching. He's talking. The crowds are hushed. They're trying to catch a word, a story, a sentence, something. And right at the northern gate of Jericho, right as they're soon to make their exit and walk that walk to Jerusalem, a beggar starts screaming. The scripture tells us that blind Bartimaeus begins to cry out to the Lord. He breaks the silence and he begins to cry out. And Mark gives us this incredible account. The remainder of the chapter, the verses remaining, is the account of Bartimaeus' engagement with Christ, with Jesus. And then the rest of Mark, the final chapters of Mark, are written to tell us of that final week of our Lord. This is a pivotal moment, an incredible moment. We could easily say that much is on the mind of God. Jesus is headed for that incredible triumphant entry. He's, he's preparing himself for that final week. He will go into the temple. He will, he will end up in that upper room. He will wash their feet. There'll be the betrayal. They'll, the Gethsemane's garden, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, all of this is going to happen. But here he is heading in that direction and suddenly there are the cries of a beggar. I am blessed by this. It catches my breath. And my heart leaps with both gratitude and hope. You see, throughout all of Scripture, 
We understand this great overarching theme of who God is and the very nature of God, a God who is merciful and gracious. We, we sing about it tonight. It's in all of our songs and our hymns and throughout all of scripture. There's this God of incredible mercy and over and over again, he's trying to get his people Throughout all of the Old Testament, it was Israel. Throughout the New Testament, he's writing to his New Testament church. And even tonight, through the revelation of the Holy Scriptures, he's still letting us know who he is. He's revealing his character to us, and he's still proclaiming to the church. God is still saying, I listen to the cry of beggars. And my friend, that's not just good news for somebody out there. It's good news for us. There's things that I like about Bartimaeus. There's things that stand out to me, and I don't know that we'll unwrap all of them here tonight in these, in these moments that we have. But one of the first things that I like about Bartimaeus that speaks to us right, right off the page of Scripture is suddenly Jesus is passing by, and there's this austere moment, a, a moment that it should have been wrapped in great reverence and respect and dignity, and yet it's shattered with the cries of a beggar. It tells me that Bartimaeus was a man who refused to be satisfied with his present condition. The cries of a man who's hungry for more. The cries of a soul who is not going to let such a moment pass, a a moment that he believes could transform his very existence. He's not going to let such a moment pass without crying out to the God of the ages. Bartimaeus begins to cry. He's not satisfied with who he is. He is not satisfied to remain a beggar when he believes that Christ, Jesus, the son of David, the Christ, that was his admission, that he was indeed the Messiah, the sent one. He was the right one. He was the Lord. He believed that he could change his condition. Listen, tonight, the good news is why we have revival tonight, why it's important that all of us be here tonight, if at all possible, is because we believe that God is yet, not only has he transformed many of us, but he's yet transforming us glory under glory. He's yet working in our lives. The thrill of the journey, the joy of life in Christ, you see. Thank God he takes us. He takes us however we come to him. But he does not leave us beggars and destitute, blind, life without purpose. Bartimaeus refused to be satisfied with his present condition. You see, the reality is tonight we will never change what we are willing to tolerate in our lives. Bartimaeus could have stayed right there. He could have been content with his little beggarly rags uh, and his little position along the curb, uh, along the dusty road. He was, after all, eking out a living. He was surviving. I mean, he was making it from day to day. But why be satisfied? Why be satisfied with that uh, when the one who's passing by can give so much more significance to your life? Why be satisfied with your present condition when the one is passing by who can change that? I'm afraid our churches are full of those who have become just content with the status quo spiritually. And my heart is broken. Across our churches, I see it. As a pastor, it broke my heart over and over again. I watched, I watched, I saw them settling. And I would, 
I would think, why, why, why would we settle? Why will we settle when, when the one that can transform us is passing by? All Bartimaeus had to know was that Jesus, the Son of God, see Jesus, the, the promised one, the Messiah, the deliverer, he'd heard about the stories. He knew who Jesus was. And when he heard that it was Jesus, he cries out this cry for help and mercy. He refused to be satisfied with his present condition. Listen, my friends. It's really not a mystery how to get God on the place. I thank God that we're people who are careful and conscientious and believe in obediences and believe in convictions. I'm glad, pray, and I believe it's important and biblical, but listen, we can stack our obediences from roof to ceiling and it will merit us nothing if there's not the hunger and the longing Amen. and the brokenness Amen. before God. This we know. This we know. God comes and meets with the broken and the contrite. Thank God we don't have to have it all right in our heads. We don't even have to have it all right in our practices. Though all of those things are important to us and to God. But there must be, there must be that longing, that broken cry that wells up deep within us. Oh God, have mercy on us. We're tired of the dusty existence along the road. We're tired of just rambling through our days with no purpose or divine drive within us. We're tired of just the routine, the tradition, in and out, there and back. Life just going on and on and the days clicking into years. We're tired of all of that. Oh God, rend the heavens. Do something. Do not pass us by. My heart cries with Bartimaeus. Oh, God, have mercy on me. Please, Lord, don't let me just live. I don't even, I don't even care if I preach fancy sermons or sing pretty songs, but I do care if I preach or sing and it doesn't make a difference. I don't have to have the finest or the nicest or everything okay, but God forbid that we just live out our existence and nothing's better or different for it. Amen. We come and we go and we come and we go. And this is why revival is important. This is why Jesus must, he's going to pass by. He said he would. Amen. He said he would. Amen. We wouldn't do this if we didn't believe that. We wouldn't invest. I hear it all the time. We're going to collect an offering for the expenses of revival. I hear it. I hear it. expenses. I said it all the time myself. Expenses of revival. We wouldn't do that if there wasn't a greater reason. Who needs more expenses? Who wants to give money to more expenses? What we are giving toward, what we're hoping for, is a move of God among us. Bartimaeus cries out. He refuses. He just finally says, I, don't, I know that's the son of God. And I'm not going to let the moment pass. Amen. It's spring revival. It's Holy Week. It's Easter week. What better week to just get it all settled? Amen. What better week to just get the spiritual victory you've been putting off? What better week to just get it settled tonight? What better time? What better time? Amen. Some of you, you really haven't nailed it down. Some of you young people, you've been riding on the religion of others around you, but you need to have your own. You need to know what it's like to experience John 3 on your own. Be born anew. You just really need to do it. 
Some of you have been sitting back there twiddling your thumbs wondering, man, what about this entire sanctification thing? What about it? What about it? What about it? What can you can't? What a, no, no, listen. I finally got to the point where I said, Lord, I don't understand it, but I couldn't, I didn't understand all of salvation either. In fact, I can't even explain that to you tonight. How in a moment in time we can be transferred from a dark world of darkness into a world of, of light. I still can't figure that all out, but I know it's true. And I remember I finally got to the point where I said, Lord, if that inner cleansing is truly real, if we're reading that correctly and interpreting that properly, if that's really available, why wouldn't I be a seeker? Amen. Oh, God, clean my heart. Amen. And the school began to call a prayer and fast. It was a time of revival. And I thought, why not? Tired of sitting on the road. I didn't want it to pass. Another revival. Another. I wanted to nail it. Down. Lord, if this is true, if this is for me, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> and on a Friday morning singing in, in chapel, the Holy Spirit witnessed to my heart that I had obeyed. I had done I had been obedient and he had done his work and would continue to do that work in me until he called me home. And I'm resting on that tonight. Amen. 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 Listen, some of you sitting on the road. You're just getting by. You've been, too, you've been content with just getting by. And, the, and Jesus is passing by and he's saying, if a beggar, if you'll call out. Bartimaeus, he's a, I like him because not only did he refuse to be satisfied with his present condition, but he refused to be sidetracked by his peers. Amen. In the next verse, it tells you, you read it, they, tell, they try to silence him. You know the story. You've heard it so much. Hey, Bartimaeus, no, 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 shh, shh, no, no. They tried to quiet him and to silence him, but it says that he cried out all the more. He wasn't being rude. He was being desperate. He, he just, like a drowning man fighting to the top, he wasn't going to let it pass. This incredible faith of this beggar. Here he is, and Jesus is trying to get a word to his church and all of us. Listen, listen, this is what it takes. This is, what it, this is why I can bypass Israel and revive Nineveh. Because I will do that to whoever repents and seeks me. They will find me, whoever they are. And Jesus is still saying, and he's speaking to a church, a people, the religious people, those uh, who were lethargic, those uh, who were too busy f f fussing over all the stuff. He, he spoke to them and said, listen, I'm on a mission. I'm on a redemptive mission. And you, and, and you have all of these things going on in your world, but I'm here to redeem the beggar. Amen. Holy Week is all about redemption. And they told Bartimaeus to be silent, but he cried out all of the more. Listen, you'll have to, you may, who knows who you have to move past or beyond or crawl over or whatever you have to do in your, you, there'll be obstacles in your way that the Satan will make sure of that. Your self-preservation will make sure of that. There'll be all kinds of enemies against that. But listen, there's the grace of God that's flowing to you tonight. The presence of Jesus in the house this very moment that assures you that if you want to, if you want to, if you want to hunger after him, you'll find him. Hallelujah. The promises are on your side tonight. The presence of Jesus is in the place tonight. You can be revived tonight and your life trans Amen. be transformed. Hallelujah. No wonder we read throughout scripture, Jesus said, even in the Beatitudes, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. What, what they shall be filled, they shall be fully satisfied, Amen. filled. Hallelujah. And he cries out all the more. I tell you story after story of those in my own life, those I've pastored and been around. When they got they got just sick and tired of the status quo and they went on a search for God. I've had him stop me in the lobby, pastor. 
I'm tired of my life just going nowhere. It just, I just feel like I'm in, I'm in neutral. What should I do? What should I do? I tell them, get in the word and start seeking God. Amen. Get in the word and on your knees and let's give it a week and see what happens. Amen. Pastor, never fails. Hallelujah. Never fails. Amen. I've watched them come to an altar of prayer. I remember one young lady running a bus route, bus ministry. She come to the altar so tired. Just banging on doors and nothing supernatural happened. No miracles happening. Began to seek God service after service, just praying, just praying. Finally, she come by herself. Finally, finally, her whole bus team started coming to the altar with her. Can I tell you that within a month's time, suddenly she had about three new converts Amen. on that bus route. Adults. Amen. It doesn't always work the same, look the same or whatever, but I know this. God responds to the cries of the hungry, Amen. of the hungry. Amen. I thank God for beautiful churches and you've got one, how blessed. I thank God we tried to build a nice one over my way. I, we, we, I don't, no, nothing wrong with beauty, but I want to tell you, your pastor will tell you, listen, beauty is only skin deep. Amen. My mama used to tell me that, you know, beauty is only skin deep, Chris. Of course, it's still nice, right? <laughs> Some of you boys quit looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. That's right, you're in Bible college. You're supposed to look like you don't know what I'm talking about. Good for you. We can have all the niceties and thank God for it and the conveniences and thank God for them. But if we don't have the power of Christ in us, Amen. And that's why we have revival. Amen. What are you tolerating tonight? That you know God can change. What are you holding back on? That you know God wants you to let go. I'm just afraid of where that's going to take me. Then you'll never experience the glory. Amen. But ask old Bart if it's worth it. Just ask Bart if it's worth it. Right. Hey, Bartimaeus, was it worth it? <laughs> I'm not Bartimaeus and I didn't get in Scripture, but you can ask me. It's worth it. It's worth it. In the crowd. They want to hold us back, but no. He cries out all the more. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. And one of the most beautiful little moments in Scripture happens. It says in the verse, then Jesus stood still. Amen. He stops. I know he heard him the first time. He saw him long before he ever, Bartimaeus ever saw him. Amen. He's always the initiator. He's always putting himself within proximity of the hungry. Amen. He's here. Amen. And the hunger and longing in your heart is the evidence of it. That's what the Bible tells us. Hallelujah. And suddenly, the boys around Bartimaeus have to get their act together or get embarrassed really good. And they say, Bartimaeus, be of good comfort. He calls for you. You don't think Bartimaeus heard that already? He's already dropping the things that would hinder him. He's going into repentance and confession mode. Amen. Off comes the identity of the beggarly rags. He lays aside his beggarly tin, whatever it is he collected his alms or his goods with. And he's, and he's on his way to fall before his Savior. 
And there he is. And he repents. And Jesus said, Bartimaeus, what would you have me do for you? You want to say, Lord, really? Isn't it quite obvious? No, it's important that Bartimaeus confessed. And that's also true throughout Scripture. Amen. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's the problem? Amen. It's my sight, Lord. It's the fact that I'm a heel grasper and I've got pride, Lord. It's my vanity. It's my fear of what you will make me do, Lord. It's my money that I don't want to give. It's that tithing thing. Lord, would you really make me go to prayer meeting on Wednesday night all the time? Would you? You know, I don't know what it is, but I know this. He'll put his finger on. Some, there'll be holdouts that he'll, that he'll, he will, he knows what he's doing. And he needs that honest confession. Amen. You need the honest confession. Amen. And Bartimaeus said, it's my eyes, Lord. My eyes. It's my sight. And the Lord touched him. Named out, called out his faith. And immediately, immediately the scripture says his eyes were healed and he saw. I've read this scripture so many times and I, I didn't see it for sure. In fact, you have to dig just a little bit to see it. But then this incredible miracle takes place. And you think, boy, Bartimaeus got his eyesight. What? That's great. But the, 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 the story doesn't stop there. He, he says something at the very end, that last, that last verse. He says, immediately, Bartimaeus, he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Or another way to say that is he followed Jesus on the road. Amen. He suddenly, God gave him sight and he had eyes for no one else. Lord, you've given me this beautiful freedom. You've, given, you've done this incredible work, this transformation, and all of it is focused on you. And he follows Jesus on the road, and it's literal. It tells me this. Bartimaeus, once sitting by the road, is now on the road. Why would you just want to sit and watch when you could be a participant? He got in with the privileged. Amen. Tonight, by the grace of God, I'm in the privileged. Thank God. One night he wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He, he inscribed it on his hand. He, he gave me, he made me a joint heir with Jesus. He, Amen. Because of the blood and grace of, because of the blood of Christ, because of his grace, I, I'm a part of the privileged. Amen. Only by his grace. But here we are. Why would we want to sit along the side, hanging on to those whatever? And he got in on the trip to Jerusalem. Amen. Bartimaeus was there Amen. at that triumphant entry. And he saw it all. Amen. Bartimaeus? Cravens, that you, that, you know, mean that fat kid from Clarksville, India? What? What, that guy? Jim Plank, that guy? What? That, you, you? Oh, yeah. Why tonight? Why tonight would you just keep tolerating? What has only added to your misery when an encounter with Jesus Christ transforms all of that Amen. into a spectacular, glorious Hallelujah. journey. Amen. Would you
you stand with me, please? I'm asking our singers to come. But you don't have to wait till the music starts on this first night. You know, if we just start, we just get hungry for God and start calling out to God. We don't need 10 days, two weeks, a month to have revival. Transformation can happen in minutes, in moments, in moments. What are you tolerating tonight? What do you keep putting off? What do you keep holding back on that Christ needs to transform in your life? You're tired of sitting in the back, just munching your gum through, the, through it all. You're just tired of sitting back there, coming in, leaving. There's so much more. So much more. I'm going to ask the singer to sing. Would you live for Jesus you know and be always pure? If you're hungry in your heart, join these that have would already come. you walk with Him? I'm tired Within of just putting up with the it, Lord. Road, just, I, I want to hear you have here I come. Bear your here I am. And carry all your load. Let him sanctify my heart, Lord. Way Cleanse my heart, Lord. Redeem me, Lord. Forgive me. Whatever your prayer is, whatever that need is. Make you what you it's revival night. Jesus is passing by and he wants to take you on the journey. And cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. Oh, yes. Was best. It was best. <laughs> for him to have his way <laughs> with oh, yeah. me. Hallelujah. Have him make you free and free. We're not going to tarry long. We're just giving you a chance. Would you know the peace Jesus didn't have to circle Bartimaeus. He didn't have to walk around and stamp the dirt. Would you have him make all kinds of a fuss? So no. He just had to put himself within proximity of that hungry heart. And that's all it took. Listen. Jesus is in proximity to you. He has intentionally placed himself. He's reachable, obtainable. Sing it with him. Some are still coming. We're just giving you time. As long as you're coming, we're going to wait. Lift it. This is our testimony. We believe this. Asking us together. Let's gather for a good old fashioned prayer meeting around this altar. There's needs all around, up and down. You're online tonight and God has spoken to your heart. Just call out to Christ right where you're at, right where you're at. Jesus is near. We're remembering you as we pray. Praise the Lord. Our Father and our God, we are very much aware of your presence tonight in this place you transformed the very atmosphere of this sanctuary you have met with us Lord you're hearing you're listening to the prayers of your people you're responding to the worship of your Saints and Lord you are bending low to meet the needs of those who are hungering and thirsting after you 
Lord, we cry out to you as a beggar would cry out with the confidence that you're a God of mercy. You're a God of loving kindness. You're a God that is slow to anger, abounding in grace and mercy. We believe that. Lord, we thank you for that tonight. And I pray that all along this altar rail, the many that are gathered here, those already seeking you, crying out to you, many of them already, you're meeting their needs already, already there's victory. We give you praise for that tonight. You're an immediate God. You're a, an immediate God. Lord, you can heal. The healing was immediate. The miracle was immediate. The deliverance, immediate tonight. Oh, Lord, we're glad that you're a God that in a moment, in a moment can do what we would struggle a lifetime to accomplish. I pray that tonight, oh God, hear, hear our cry. Hear our prayer. We know that you do. The very longing in our heart you have placed there. The very longing that we even have for you is placed there by your prevenient grace. We thank you for that. So Lord, as we do our part to respond, to reply, to respond as best we know, in obedience to the workings of your grace, and humble contrition, brokenness, and humility, oh God, we know it is true that you exalt the humble. We experience God. Oh, we thank you for that tonight, oh Lord. Minister your grace. Bring victory tonight. Those that need, some maybe need to be saved. Oh Lord, may tonight be the night. Those that need to be sanctified holy. There needs to be that full surrender and submission of self. There needs to be that inner cleansing and empowerment of grace. That boldness to live in the spirit. Oh God, save us from our greatest enemy and that being ourselves. Oh God, may it be so. There may be some here that just need, they just need encouragement. They need a miracle. They, they need clarity. Whatever it might be, Lord, you know their prayer. Some just hungry hungry for the presence of the, the Lord in their life. Lord, grant us that manifestation of your holy presence. Speak to us through your word. Speak to us through the worship, testimony, and fellowship of the believers. Speak to us, O oh God, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, all this week, O oh God, every night, every night, every moment, Lord, wake us in the night guided of the Holy Spirit to lead us in prayer. Oh God, may this week give us, renew our physical energy and renew us, Lord, spiritually and physically, body, soul, and mind. So that we may be revived and renewed. I ask these favors in the... In the name that is above every name. In the name that sets the captive free. The name that brings deliverance to the one held in bondage. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me on us. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> what a great God. What a great God. I didn't deserve anything but his wrath, and yet he's given me nothing but mercy. <laughs> I just tell you, he's a loving Lord. He's a redeemer. Hallelujah.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank God. Amen. Anyone just want to stand up right where you are and praise the Lord for what he's done for you tonight? Anybody like that? Or across the congregation? Amen. That's good. Anyone else? Praise the Lord for that good testimony. We just don't want to be satisfied to stay where we are. There's a chorus that we sing here. We can sing it just now. More of you. Let's sing that together. 183 in the chorus book if you need it. Let's stand together, those who are able. More of you.
to as many services as you can. I hope that'll be all of them. And I, I, hope that, I hope that God will just move upon us in a very special way. Uh, not only in the services, but before you go to sleep tonight, if you wake up in the night, and when you wake up in the morning and as you go throughout your day tomorrow, let's just stay in an attitude of, Lord, you can have all of me. Amen. Brother Cravens, why don't you go to the back if you want to see everybody like you say. They'll want to shake hands with you because nobody shakes hands. And so they're going to want to shake hands with you. And, and uh, what a privilege to have Brother Cravens and the Carries here. I just feel like God's going to help us and is helping us and has helped us. Praise God. Let's go rejoicing in the Lord and prayerful also. You are dismissed. <laughs>